Good morning everybody, Alex here from Snake on Exotics. Today we've got a special request. So uh, we had some lads playing outside the shop yesterday with a football. And we've got a ledge on the above the shop, which is like a canopy thing. Of course the ball's on top of there, isn't it? So uh, I said if I get time today, I'll get the lads, and get a big stick and I'll get it down for them and I'll put it in the shop for when they come back. So at some point today, we've got to get the football down for them. So uh, we'll do that and we'll go around, we'll do some stuff with the animals, get ready for tomorrow for feeding day. And then uh, we can crack on and have a good day. Please like, subscribe, comment and share and ring that bell for me if you haven't already. And I shall see you in a sec. First things first, before we do anything, let's get this ball down before I have kids pounding me to get this ball down. So I'd rather do it with nobody around. Oh, so I don't want kids messing around with the ladder while I'm up the ladder. So if we could do it nice and early, while oh, they're all still in bed, happy days. So we're going to go over, get the ladder. I've got a curtain roll pole. So it's a wooden one, I was going to try and use it in the shop somehow. So we can use that to knock it down. We'll have a look where it is and see how far on the roof it is. So I ain't had a look yet. So I've set the ladder up to see if we can see the ball. Ah, she's there. Right there. See the tippity top of it. So I'll move the ladder across. We'll get the big stick and see if we can get it. Not work. Let's try again and further on down. <laughs> there we go we some out with some with a little bit with some help from Narinda we got the ball back so I'll keep it in here for them as soon as somebody comes and uh, claims it I'll uh, ask them to describe it and then they can have it I'm pretty sure I remember the lad who did it anyway but we'll always ask just in case Day long, then we just smelt it. <laughs> They've just come in. Have you got the ball? Have you got the ball? It's not on the roof. It's not on the roof. Have you got the ball? <laughs> Little kids, man. So funny. One job I'd like to do today is I think we need to move the arowana. He's getting quite big now and he's literally ain't got much to swim. So he's just going back and forth. So, what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade him to this big tank down here. So, he can have a lot more room to swim, gives him a chance to get a lot bigger. Um, we will look at other fish to move around today, but that's going to be the main one that I need moving. Um, yeah, he's having a little bit of a paddy for some reason, I don't know why, but uh, we're, we're getting, it's going to be a pain to catch him. Uh, it might be easier to try and get him in some sort of bucket and then transfer him over like that because he's going to go mad in a bag, he's going to try and jump out and do stuff like that. So. That'll be an interesting job for us today. We've got to try and acclimate him. Um, so yeah, we'll have to try our best. We'll have to cover it up to make sure we don't jump out while we're acclimating and stuff like that. So that's one big job we've got to do today. And then we've got to do some stuff with the reptiles as well. I think while it's early and we ain't got many customers, we'll crack on and get this job done. So uh, I've got a nice big bag to acclimate him in. So uh, it gives him room to swim around so he doesn't panic. Uh, he's not going to enjoy this at all. Um, we have to be very careful, very slow with our movements because he's just going to go absolutely do lally tap when we do this. Um, so I'll open the tank he's going to go into. And then we need something to cover his lid with. His lid? His bag with. Um, 
might get another bag. We can lay another bag on top. So if he does jump, at least he's going to hit that bag and go back in. Um, yeah, he's going mad. I don't know why. Unless he's been listening to us. But he's, he's going round mad for some reason. So I'll get set up. And we're, I'm going to try and scoop him into the bag. Because uh, I don't really want to net him if I can help it. Okay, so here he is. Oh, he's going mad. You okay, mate? You okay? Can I just do a little bit? You see the whole tank? Oh, we're jiggling, we're jiggling, we're jiggling. There you go, you can see most of the tank now. Okay, so the tank is open. Hopefully he doesn't go too mad. Just wanted to swim into the bag like that. And turn. Oh, he swam back out. As soon as he swims into the bag, we're gonna have to turn it and get him trapped in it. Okay, there he is. Look, he's all right. He's all right. We got him. We got him in the bag. We we'll grab a little bit more water, and then we're gonna lift and go straight into that tank. Okay, so there he is. We're dropping straight down into here. We'll give it one dip. He's got a bit more of his water. And then we lay this on top of the bag. So if he jumps, the bag might stop him a little bit. Um, we have to stay away from the bag so we don't wind him up. But uh, I think that'll do the job. So he's down there now. Swimming around in the bag. It's going to be, it won't be too long because we don't have to acclimate for temperature because the tanks are exactly the same temperature. All we have to do is acclimate for water quality. So we're uh, 15 minutes uh, and it should be okay. So we've already done one dunk. I'll probably do four dunks during this time and then uh, he'll be ready and he can go and have, he's got a nice big tank to swim in. I don't want to jinx it, but touch wood, that went well. <laughs> I was expecting him to jump a lot more than what he actually did. Um, he only jumped twice in the bag and stayed actually stayed in the bag. So, uh, and he's chilled out now. He's just sat there in the bag chilling. So he's not panicking, he's not going back and forth. So we're just gonna, I might turn the light off. That might be a good idea as well. Turn the light off to that tank, let him mellow out. And then um, we can turn it back on once we release him. What I've done is I've darkened half the tank because we have half a light bulb is on one side and the other half is on the other light bulb. So where he is in the bag, it's actually dark, and then the rest of the tank is lit up. So uh, if you pat, he hasn't. I couldn't see him in the bag then, he's right at the top. Oh, he's okay, he's in there. So we let him chill out now, and then I'll show you when I release him. We've just had a customer request. Uh, they've asked me to build and scape this tank out for them for a. Mantis. So uh, we've got to clean it and sort it all out, and then uh, um, they're going to come and pay me for it all and come and collect the mantis and the tank. Um, so we've got to clean it and make it look cool. He's, he's bought pre bought some bits he wants in the tank, so uh, we're we'll trying to carry on and make it look really cool. We'll see how we get on. So you don't want to watch me clean this because it could be boring, but it might be funny to watch me do it really, really fast. So we we'll do it in uh, time lapse and uh, see what happens. Uh, so, cue music, cue montage. Okie dokie then, so she's semi clean now. There's still the odd finger mark on the outside, but she's clean on the inside now, so I think they use it for a fish tank for a little bit. So, we've got a little bit of forest life left. That's what we're going to use today. For mantis substrate, cocoa fibre is also an equal equivalency. Uh, so, I could just pour it in, couldn't I? So, you want a nice layer at the bottom. 
if we had spring tiles we'd be adding spring tiles but there is a national shortage at the moment so we can't get any apparently in europe there was a um some mold got into the big massive um supply of spring tiles uh, and it's wiped out virtually the whole population so where uh, they're trying to rebuild the population before they start selling them again so uh, it's hard to get them at the moment so we do last little touch-ups it's looking good so uh, i'll show you one of the main things they want in there uh, i'll go get it now give me a second so this is one of the main things they want in there to be the main piece of the tank. So really it would be nice to get some moss and try and get some moss to grow on it. Um, but we might struggle a little bit. I think that's going to look really quite cool to be fair. Um, I'm going to go around and see what other bits and bobs I've got we can add to it to make it look cool. Um, and what we can put on the bottom to make it look cool and carry on with the build. So I found a bag of moss and I've got a bag of reindeer moss. I think this would look better. It is non-dyed reindeer moss though. So this is just straight reindeer moss, straight from the reindeer. It's not really from reindeer, it's just reindeer are the only animals that really eat it. Uh, it's a special moss that comes from really, really cold places like Alaska and over places that are cold. <laughs> Iceland. Iceland's cold. No, Greenland. Greenland's the cold one, isn't it? Um, so yeah, this is where this comes from and reindeer eat it. That's where it gets its name from. But a lot of it is dyed different colours. That wouldn't be any good because it doesn't want the dyes on the animals. This is just pure white like it should be in the wild. So uh, that's fine for us to use. Um, we do have the moss to use as well, but I don't think it's going to give us the same look as the, as the reindeer moss would. But we can use that for the substrate. We can give it a look and see what it looks like on the plant. Um, so I'll crack on. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the tree up a little bit so it looks like it's on a plinth. You know what I mean? So it's not on the same level as the rest of the floor. Lovely, 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 lovely. There we go. That's all of my stuff. All of my stuff. Ready to go. Oh, oh, oh. So that is where the tree is going to go, I think. I like the look of that. Slightly raised up platform, only a smidge. And the will the trees fit on there? Oh, lovely. That's what we like. So it's going to be up in the corner like that. You can find just a tiny bit of more substrate just to hide some of the ends of the roots. So it looks like the roots are going into it. We can hide some of that with the moss as well. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to no, we'll try the moss first. So I'll put the moss on the bottom. And then um, I can see I'm putting some on the tree and see if it looks right. If not, I'm going to go for this. But I might time lapse it when I actually do the tree because this might take me a while. But we can start with this, which is our live moss. Here we go. So we've got lovely, lovely live moss. It's not super the best though. I mean, it's all, it's, it's okay. I wouldn't really say it was alive though, apart from what well, these little tiny bits are. But the rest, that this is dead. This is just dead. So. Uh, you want the live moss where it's all green, it's better I found when it's in the tray. When it's in the tray it's usually a lot better because it hasn't been rammed in like it is with these. So we can do a nice thin layer across the bottom. And I think if we did moss on the tree it's going to make it, it won't look right because it looks like the same stuff that's on the floor. We want to try and get it nice and fluffy if we can so it doesn't look as weird. If we just got blocks of it on the bottom, I don't think it's going to look right. But it should give a look of like a dry grass sort of look. Whoa. I think that's starting to get a little bit looking good. And I want just a tiny bit going up the roots. Just to hide them a little bit. 
and make it look like the roots are coming out of the soil. So I'm still breaking it up in my hands, getting it nice and fluffy, and I'm just going right at the base of the roots. I don't want to hide all the roots because it's quite cool looking and they've put quite a lot of effort into making it look cool. So I just want to hide the tips, just the tips. Just the tip. That's what we like, just the tip. There we go. And I'm going to do round the back as well. We don't want to miss the back. So we're going to have to slide it down past it all. I might have to get the tweezers for this because my big hands can't fit down the back. So I'll go get the tweezers and I can push that down into place. Okay, so I've got my tweezers. Push that down. Oh, that's looking good. Okay, pass it. Push, push, push. Come on, pass the tree. Get off the tree, last. Come on, off the tree. There we go, down the bottom. Push it down nicely, recover the roots, show a bit of wood. Okay, I like the look of that. That looks quite cool. So I might put a tiny little bit just on this edge because it looks a little bit weird. There we go. Waha. Now I'm going to do the tree. It might take me a while. Because if I did this on the tree, it ain't going to look right. It would look okay, but I just don't think it would look really cool. No, it's, it's, it's going to match the bottom too much. It needs to be a different colour. So I think the closest thing we've got is the reindeer moss, which is going to be a little bit whiter than the moss. So... If it takes me ages, I'm gonna do a little speed thing for you. So uh, we can try, but what I'm gonna be doing is I'll be getting the base stem like that, and I'm gonna be ramming it into the pockets and getting it to, because we don't wanna use any glue. So I'll be doing stuff like that to make it look nice like a tree. So we just, I haven't got much as well, so we've got to be very careful not to waste any because we haven't got much to go around. So I'm going to be nice and gentle with all the bits and try and poke it into nice little nooks and crannies so we get the idea that it looks like a tree. So I'm going to crack on with this. I can put you on fast mode so you get to see what I do and then the tree will just magically get covered in stuff. There you go, there's our lovely tree. Almost looks like it's a little bit frostbitten. So what I've done, I haven't tried to cover every branch. I've tried to keep some exposed so it looks a little bit like a normal tree and you can see some of the branches and stuff inside. There you go, a little close-up look for you. There you go, there's the root system. Looks like a nice evergreen tree, which happens to not be green. It's arowana time, so he's ready to go. He's been well behaved. He only tried to jump out once when I was doing the water. So we're going to release him now into his new tank. And he's just jumped out as I spoke. Just jumped out, you naughty little arowana. As, as I was speaking, the bag moved and he jumped out. So you can see the bag, he's literally come out of there and gone over. So it's no hassle. He's in the tank, that's all we need. Just got to make sure we don't overflow so we don't leak the tank. No, that's lovely. So we let this drain. Oh. And then we can cape an eye on him, shut the lid. There he 
ears like he's looking at the other fishes. You see, we fed him yesterday, so he's got a nice big belly on him. I notice he's got some lovely markings on his fins as well. So much leopard print. But he's going to do a lot better in this bigger tank now. So we'll let him chill out. I'll turn the light on in a bit. But he's got a nice big tank to grow out. What we're going to do to end the video today, we're going to feed the fishes. So we've got the Oscars to feed, some locusts. We've got the Arowana to feed in his new tank. See if he's going to feed for us. He might not. Uh, and then we've got the wolf fish to feed as well. So we've got a bunch of fishes to feed. So we'll do them and then we'll finish for the day. We're going to do little Oscars first while we wait for uh, stuff to defrost. So we've got our two heavy reds Oscars. So heavy red means they don't have all the normal patterns like our big one. They're, all the red is like bled into everything else. So uh, they're very, there's not much markings on them. They're basically just red. See, they've just got the red sides on them. There's not much black markings like on the normal ones. Um, they've just got the big red side. So I think they're really cool when they're big. Um, so I'm going to chuck them in some locusts, see what they do, and hopefully they have a good munch. Okay then lads, are we ready? you got white on you, have as well. Alright, so let's get some locusts. Some locusts. Oh, we've got one jumped in already. He jumped in, he sacrificed himself. He's like, I want to go to the fishes. Oh, we've got loads. Hut, hut. Hut. There we go, we got him. So one of you's already had one, you greedy little fishes. Oh, they're fighting over it. You got another one? Oh, he's got it. He's let go. Oh, your mate nearly stole that from you, sir. Nearly. Do you want another one, mate? You look lonesome not having one. Do you want a big one so you can swim around with it in your mouth? Okay, then we can sort that out for you, sir. Where is it? Where is it? Open the top. Give me a locust. Oh, we've got two. Whoop. Which one do you want? The big one or the little one? It's up to you. It looks like one really big one because they're touching. Oh, separated them. He's going for the big one. Oh, he's got himself a big one. He said, yeah, I can swim around with one in my mouth just like he can. We'll leave you for a little bit of extra food for in a minute. As soon as they see you, you ain't going to last long, mate. So you can just sit pretty and they shall be back in a sec. Now we're on Big Oski. Big Oski has large locusts because he's a big lad. He just inhales these as well. So uh, we'll get set up and we'll chuck some in for it. Don't you jump out. Stay where you are. Up, 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 up. It's naughty. Choice to jump when there's no food. Stop it. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Ah! Stop it. Wait. So naughty. Oi! You so naughty. He's all right though. He only he only jumped out and jumped back in. He's a good lad. So we we'll give him another one because he just smashed that one. There we got two jump out. Lovely job. We go from a bottom view. Can we see it? It's not going to do very well, is it? Oh! Another one. Oh. See now that is the proper markings. You can see the difference now. I'm really looking at his big face. I oh, know you're a big scary Oscar. Oh yes, big scary Oscar, yes. Look at that, big loss. He's so cool. So the idea is that, that is meant to look like a second eye, that circle at the back. Because fish like to attack from behind. Um, and if he's got an eye on both ends, fish don't know where to attack him from. So that's the idea behind the eye marking on the back. It's the same with most fit animals that have an eye on their back. It would help if I put water in there to defrost it, wouldn't it? Just leaving it in there with no water. It does nothing, Alex. <laughs> so what we're going to do now while we wait for that to defrost again, uh, we're going to feed the arowana. So he has had a couple of hoo-hahs today. Uh, anyone walks past the tank, he goes mad. So we've got to try and be careful not to scare him. So I'm just going to put some in at the one end and we're just going to sit and watch him 
and hopefully he's going to feed. We did have some yesterday, so he's not going to be super hungry. So I'm not going to go mad, we're just going to give him a little bit. Here we go, not much. We sit here and we watch him. We see if he's a hungry boy. So he's right at the far end at the moment, squaring up to the gramis. He's like, I'm the biggest fish in the tank. So the food is all the way over here. So I'll be surprised if he comes over to get it. But I think he's going to do a lot better in this big tank. A lot better. What do you think about trying to do the wolf fish in slow mo? I think we're going to be what we call it cool. So I'm going to set up the camera and we're going to try and feed him in slow mo and see him come up and splash. That would be really cool. I think that went really well. So uh, he gave us a good drenching. <laughs> but we have to start filling his tank up. <laughs> so he keeps draining his tank from splashing. But how cool was that, man? On the first one, you see him on top of the water swimming back down. The second time, he just drenches me. But what a cool fish, man. Oh, I love this fish. I'm afraid that's all the time I've got for you today. Please like, subscribe, comment and share. Ring the bell if you haven't already. And if you want to support me, the animals and the shop, there's also a link in the description below. Um, and if you want to see where I get my animals from and what animals are in stock, there's also a link in the description below. So I'll see you in the future. Bye.